these drones have a wide range of application in aerial photography environmental monitoring weather prediction and medical emergency and drones can fly beyond visual lines of sight while maximizing production reducing cost and risk ensuring site safety security and regulatory compliances protecting the human workforce in the times of pandemic in order to make us update about drone programming today we have an expert resource person mr jatin korekar sir before starting the webinar i would like to introduce our resource person mr jatin korekar sir he did his bachelor degree in computer engineering from university of pune and masters in software engineering from epita paris france he worked with an anr solution pune as a software developer and a web mobile app developer at redbird paris france he had been engaged in several drone projects like drone vault hercules fly uf app drone survey and measurement app drone vault pilot and many others he has been engaged in various such projects so now i welcome jatin sir in this esteemed webinar now i request senior professor and the coordinator dr sm jadhav sir to share some valuable guidance to us i request you sir uh, good afternoon uh, one and all uh, today's uh, speaker mr jatin kolekar then our head of the department uh, dr sanjay sutar and coordinator uh, sitaram ji more ekta madam and uh, other faculty members um, and dear students i welcome you all on this occasion and uh, this is a very good uh, topic and a very expert resource person we have today this is uh, my pleasure that uh, uh, to put before you that uh, jatin kolekar is a uh, among us our uh, area only he, he belongs to goregaon and right now he is a specialized software development specializing in uh, development of uh, mobile applications for drones and, and uh, he is uh, having a uh, very active role in the uh, future of drones uh, and for the purpose of software development for next Uh, generation 5G drones, and he also have some drone network for Silicon Valley startup also. So, friends, uh, drone programming is very much essential, and uh, it is it is a very useful and it can save uh, lives of peoples at large when it is used uh, seriously and carefully, and its applications can be extended. Uh, friends, you might be uh, remembering that uh, last few years back. we had a event of uh, that near maha down that one river due to the cracks in the bridge that a bridge crack and uh, suddenly so many vehicles uh, flooded in that uh, river and uh, many lives we have lost uh, if we could have uh, audited that uh, bridge with the help of drone cameras by taking uh, photos at various corners various angles bottom of the bridge we might we might have come up with a different solution and those families were with us today so in, in, there is a huge, huge importance is there for drone programming uh, so i now will not take much time and i will hand over the control of the today's uh, event to mr jatin kolekar and the coordinator professor ekta i wish all the best for the today's program and i i i am sure the participants will definitely come uh, with some thread a uh, new thread of developing uh, some uh, programs and surely in future i hope uh, professor mr jatin kolekar will help our students and we can extend his contribution and we can uh, surely uh, try to improve skills of our students so that they can build a career in this and um, help our society in large 
so good luck uh, so all the best for the program and uh, thank you ma'am for giving me the opportunity thanks jatin okay okay thank you so much for your valuable work thank you now i request uh, mr jatin kolekar sir to start the session okay uh, thank yes okay sir thank you yeah yeah ma'am for the great introduction for uh, telling uh, okay. the class thank what you. i have worked and uh, asan jadhav sir uh, thank you also for uh, the explanation that you have given it is very useful that uh, you can provide like an example to show the students the importance that drones can play in our life uh, even currently and also in the future uh, so uh, i'll today uh, i'll give like a small introduction before i start Uh, so today uh, what i uh, i'll try to explain to you guys would be like if you want to get into the fields of drone uh what is the best idea to go forward in uh what are the best pathways that you can take so that if you want to learn drone programming uh where you should start and all, i would also suggest like uh, the main platforms that are currently used in the world and if you want to start in one of them how you can go ahead with it uh so i'll share my screen uh are you able to see my presentation screen Yes, it's visible. It's yes, visible. Uh, okay. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, for the course that we are going to do today, uh, there is going to be like five main topics. Uh, first is the introduction. So, uh, I'll explain what are drones, uh, what are the different types of drones, and the advantages of getting into drone programming. Then we'll talk about some different kinds of use case. So, if uh, students are interested uh, in doing something on their own. uh they can think about different places where they can use the ideas uh then the next one will be the drone architecture in drone architecture i'll speak about the two main architectures that are used today in the world and uh, uh, explain how if you want to get into either one of them how you can get in uh then uh, one of the one of this architecture is like an open source architecture and this is made available by the drone team so that you can set it up on your own device so tomorrow like if you want to start drone programming what you can do is like you can straight away download the simulators and the applications and you can start doing the programming yourself on your pc so i'll tell you how to where to look for the architecture and if you need some help i can help you guys with the setup as well and the last one would be the open source software so drone community is very much built on open source software because uh as you know like flying a very small device uh like a drone is very difficult and there has been multiple companies working throughout the world together to solve this problem so there are many open source softwares that have been created during this process and i'll share with share this softwares with you so if you want to build something or if you have a an idea where you want to use drones you can uh, use this pre built solution that work very well and are very safe to use uh so what are drones so drones are basically unmanned aerial vehicles so anything that can be controlled from far away or there or on the second type we have like automated missions so what do you mean by automated missions is that uh the drone has a flight controller on it and the flight controller works as the computer which is there inside the drone and you can create different kinds of mission for that and using this missions you can fly different uh pathways that that would help you pro, uh, provide services to your client so for example when uh, sir mentioned that we could uh, have scanned the bridge so in that kind of a scenario you could actually design a mission to specifically scan different spots of the bridge and you can do like you can save those missions on the drone so in the future if you want to do those missions again and again uh, you can easily do them 
so there are different types of drones currently in the world and depending upon what kind of a use case there is there is an advantage of using different ones of them so from the top left uh, you see a drone which looks which which looks like a plane but it also has uh, propellers on it so what this drone is like it's a combination of both planes and helicopters so these are the kinds of drones which are used in scenarios where you need long flight time but need to take it off quickly and take down as well so these are also kinds of drone that are used mostly in agriculture but this is also used mainly by different militaries in the world because it provides them an ability to quickly launch their drones and also to fly well. then the second example is uh, these are big size Uh, which special ability on them so for example here you can see like this drone has a water tank which is attached to it below and then you have the pipeline which sends the water over and you can you can use it for different kinds of things like there are uh, there are companies that use this kind of a drone to clean solar panels there are also uh, companies in the world that use it for agriculture uh, then the third picture that you see is is a simple drone this is like the most common use case drone and here it is used for uh delivering a parcel so this is something that we have heard a lot like big companies like amazon zomato are trying to get uh, get this get into this and try to implement this technology and i think we are now very close to this technology and in one or one and a half year uh, we would see this implementation once we get the regulatory ap approvals from the government and the last one is like a complete clean so this one is mainly for doing surveillance mission so lots of times uh, for example small scale farmers it is not possible for them to buy a big drone uh, which can cost around 10000 dollars for example so in that scenario they these planes can be useful for them because the planes have very long flight time so what happens is like multiple people can buy this plane together and they can fly over their farms to do uh, different kinds of survey uh, so uh, i'll speak about the use cases so one of the main advantages of drones is to see images that humans cannot see so for example uh, i'll give an example the first example with a photo so detection of detection uh, detection of diseases at a very early stage so this is something i also personally work on and i have seen the difference it can make currently this technology is at a very early stage uh, so it is not yet widely used but the main goal of this technology is that uh, there are special kinds of camera uh, that can identify uh, if there are diseases in the crops so what we do is like we scan the whole farm from a very high altitude and this kind of a camera what it does is like it detects diseases if you can see in the images there are lots of red parts so these red parts are actually uh, plants that are having diseases and these diseases are not actually visible to human eyes so we cannot detect them at least one to two months after the drone has detected them so what this allows us to do is like it allows us to save a lot of crops and especially uh, currently in the world around 30% of the crops are just destroyed even before they are cultivated so having a technology like this where we can detect uh, crops very at a very early stage and also pro help protect them could solve uh, could go a long way in solving her world hunger as there are lots of farmers who are not as well educated and they don't understand the different uh, different technologies so companies coming in and helping them with this uh, in this kind of a way to identify big issues very early on could be a large help for them uh, second advantage uh, second uh, use case for agriculture is also spraying of pesticides so pesticides are something that that when sprayed by humans with hand there is a very big problem that we could we could be uneven and there can be human errors so using drones can also solve this uh, similar to finding diseases there are also different types of analytics and that that, that help. so for counting how the farm is going on if there is some grass that is growing in the middle so this kind of things can be useful uh, to identify with the drone and also like if there is weather damage so lots of time what happens is like uh, we have flood in india and during that time the government is not able to quickly understand like up to what level the damage has been done so in that case using drones uh, to survey areas right from the top 
uh, could be a very big help. And like uh, Sir spoke before, like disaster management is also one of the big big points. Like if we can use drones to detect uh, fires earlier on, or to uh, to find people from air to if if during floods, we'll save uh, save lots and lots of lives. So this is also one of the use case of drones. Uh, there are also drones which have like thermal cameras that can detect uh, temperatures of big fires from a far away distance, which can help us understand to, uh, which direction the fire is going and help detect it and also send more fire engines in that direction so that uh, the fire can be stopped from spreading. And the next one is construction. So there are lots of companies like telecom or uh, normal building constructions uh, that can also use uh, drone technology. So normally, like everybody wants to see how the progress is, uh, how the project is developing. But it is not very easy to see because when you're building, making a big building or you're uh, creating a base for the building, in that kind of a time, what happens is like uh, the changes are very minor. So for example, if you're started digging, uh, the digging for going from six feet to say 60 feet, a, every day if you see it is not easily visible to the eyes. So having a drone that just goes up in the air and takes photos uh, is a great service that is used by construction companies. So they can also know also like if there are any defects. Telecom towers have a very, very important, important need that and the towers would defect very early so that there is no uh, loss of signal or loss of tower in uh, which can cause the network to go away so in that case they are also one of the biggest users of drone where they take photos every one week or two week or three week and create uh, surveys of those towers to see, uh, identify if there are any defects uh, also one more thing that has come out nowadays is the solar panels and wind and even for cleaning and detecting problems in them, drones are used a lot nowadays. And I would say the last one, and also the most used one technology currently is uh, for surveying. So you can see over here, this image is actually 3D created. So these are around 300 drone images. And from those drone images, they have extracted a 3D building. And as drones are comparatively cheaper to flights, and also they have like, nowadays the cameras have become cheap as we can see also on our phones. So on the drones as well, the technology of the camera has improved a lot. And as these devices are more easily available, uh, doing surveys using drones has become a new big thing. And one of the main advantages that drone provides in, in, in surveying is that if you could see the building that we have surveyed over here, uh, it took only around 20 minutes to survey this using a drone. So what it does is like it increases the speed by a, a lot because humanly cal calculating this this whole building takes a lot of time. And also the second thing is that the drones are very precise as they are automated and with image processing, uh, you can remove errors. Uh, you can remove so much errors that you can actually detect uh, some things that are as small as five centimeters in this kind of an image. So if there are any defects, they are very easily uh, identifiable. And there are also insurance companies that use that uh, nowadays because before what used to happen was if there was an issue and an insurance company had to fix it, they had to send someone over there to see it. Nowadays, they can just send over a drone that does it automatically and you have the picture straight away. Uh, so now we'll get into the drone architecture. So before starting drone act architecture, I'd like to mention some of the advantages that students can have learning drone program. So this is one of the fastest growing markets in the world. So what a, one of the advantages is that India in India also, there are lots of big IT companies now that are building their own drone platforms and own drone surveillance system. So learning basics of drone programming can go a very long way in getting a job. So that could be a good good thing for the students. The second thing is also like I have mentioned multiple things. Uh, these are all the things like cleaning roofs, doing surveys, uh, flood management. Uh, these are all things that are uh, these are all things that are currently at a very early stage. 
So if there are some students that want to start this business, there are already applications that are built to scan crops, for example. And we could easily find uh, find customers, like find farmers who want to see the uh, see the issues with their crops or identifying diseases for farmers that do not have the capability. So currently in India, there are lots of farmers who are uh, not very well educated and we can go out and help them to identify risks in their in their farms at a very early stage so that they can be more successful. So this is this is also a very big business opportunity. And I would say like as we are at a very early stage in drones, uh, this could be a great opportunity. Uh, one more thing is that you get to use latest technology. So like I have mentioned during the call as well. So you have like drone delivery where you have a whole big network. Uh, then you have uh, image processing. Uh, you have AI. You have robots that are coming in now to handle different kinds of drones. So when you learn drone technology, you go into the very advanced field of drone programming, uh, very advanced field of software engineering. So one of the greatest advantage I would say is that you get to learn lots and lots of new technologies and also get to uh, work with them. Because uh, I have personally seen that myself, like I was lucky to get into the drone, uh, drone field around five and a half years ago. And I have been privileged to work with very different kinds of technology. So currently I'm working with a Silicon Valley company that wants to build a completely automated drone network so that we can order drones, for example, like Uber, like you order taxi on Uber. And instead of even in Uber, you have like people inside of the taxi, but they want to build a system that is completely automated. So you can be sitting in India, for example, and doing a mission in Japan where the drone uh, can just come in from the network and do the mission that you want to do and be again part of the network. Uh, so something like that. So, so so as I said, like you get to work with different kinds of technology. Uh, so for in this drone network, for example, uh, the batteries are changed by robots. So uh, uh, you also get a chance to work with robots. This is just an example. But what I'm trying to say is like once you get into a technology, uh, the scope is very, very big. And you get lots and lots of different opportunities that are not only uh, great to work in, but also a lot of fun because you see lots of new technologies happening right in front of your eyes. And last, but uh, the fun thing also is that uh, you can fly the drones and drones are really fun to fly and you can see lots of different images. Uh, the view that you get from the top is uh, very good. So it is also a lot of fun. Uh, so now we'll get into the architecture. So how the architecture works. So basically the drone can be divided into three parts. So one is the hardware drone. Uh, one is the mobile phone, and then there is a communication protocol in between. So what do I mean by the drone? Uh, I actually have a drone with me right now. So if you can see right now, so this is like a simple a simple DJI drone, uh, which, which can do normally all kinds of missions that I have mentioned. So this is a drone that flies around uh, 30 minutes, and it is completely automated, and it can also be controlled using our phones. So what you are seeing here is the left part of the architecture. So this drone uh, inside of it, so this is the drone hardware. If you go one level up, there is a flight controller which is there inside of it uh, that controls all the missions. You can also see the camera that is there. So the camera is controlled using that. And for taking photos, recording videos, telling the drone where to go, there is a logging system inside of this. So for all these kinds of things, there is a drone flight controller which is there inside of it. And this drone uh, flight controller acts like a normal, uh, I would say, processor that you have inside your own PCs. So this is what is the brain of the, the brain of the drone. And you communicating directly with this helps us uh, to control the drone. And on this uh, flight controller, like you have normally on your processor, uh, like on your PCs, you have Windows, Linux, and things like that. So similarly, there are companies that build software for this uh, so that we can use pre-built features that are safe. And I would explain to you in the next two slides the main currently architectures that are in the market. Uh, so the second part is the communication protocol. So for communicating with it, uh, there are protocols that are already built by these specific companies as well. 
So if you want to send a specific message, like if you want the drone to take off, uh, there is a drone takeoff message and you can technically add that in your own application so that you can send, send those commands to the, uh, to the drone. And I, I would say there is lots of documentation on it that is already made. Uh, you have lots of different messages and different types of methods that you can use. And uh, once you decide, like, if you want to go into drone programming, and once you decide that uh, he, which one of the architectures you want to use, uh, you can download the specific uh, protocols and softwares related to it uh, to start on your own side. And the last one is the ground control station. So what do I mean by ground control station is just any device that can control a drone. So over here, for example, my phone acts as the ground control station to control this drone. And the, the hardware can be anything. Uh, it depends on the communication protocol if it is supported. But normally, like Android, iOS, and Windows is supported by all the, all the different systems. So if you want to go ahead and do programming, you can select any one of the things that you like. Uh, there are also different programs that are built in different languages. So if someone wants to do it in Java, they can do it in Java. If someone wants to do it in C-sharp, they can do it in C-sharp as well. And so these ground control station software works on these phones and we can control the drones using that. Uh, I'll provide you with an example later once I explain the two architectures. So the two uh, main architectures that I was talking about. So currently there is a DJI. So what is DJI is DJI is like the world's largest drone company currently. It's based in China. And the drone that you was that you just saw was made by that exact company as well. So one of the main things that uh, DJI has managed to do is reduce the problems that we had with the drones. So before we had lots of crashes and the camera quality was not good. And DJI managed to fix it around three or four years ago. And since then, they have been the best company in the world. And they currently have like 75% of, of the market share as well. So normally, if if you go out and go to interview a for a company, for example, normally there is a very high chance that they are already using a DJI drone. And the second part is uh, the open source architecture. So open source architecture is based on two technologies named as PX4 or Ardu Pilot. They are two European-based uh, open source companies now uh, that have been developing uh, new and new things so that the user can do different kinds of things with the drone. And they make the flight controller and also the firmware. So what do I mean by the flight controller? I have been saying it for a long time. So this is like an example of a flight controller. So this goes off inside a drone. And then depending upon what kind of a drone you want to build, like we saw different kinds of drone. There was a plane. Uh, there was a drone which had four wings, uh, four propellers, or there was also a drone which had eight. So the idea is to have this uh, flight controller and then connect different parts of your drone to it so that you can control these drones. So normally this, this flight control is built by Pilot. And we install a firmware on it to control uh, all the different functions that are on the drone. So one of the main things that has picked up with the open source technology has been the big companies. So nowadays, there are very big companies like Amazon, Uber, Intel that have joined the open source program because uh, the companies that are based in China don't share their technologies. So what happens is like they have been advancing a lot. They are already three or four years ahead of all the other countries in the world. So what has happened is like the big American companies have now started coming together uh, so that there can be a competitive opposition to the Chinese drones. And their idea has been to support this open source. So I would suggest that in the future, if you want to get into it, getting into this kind of open source software could be a big thing because there are going to be lots of companies now uh, that are going to be using it. And like you know already that Amazon is building, for example, a uh, a delivery system and if you in the future want to work on this then you could definitely learn this kind of a technology that for example the Ardu pilot uh, that they, they use inside their drones so you know you uh, if you learn how it works even the basics at your level uh, in the college level uh, there is a very high chance that they would uh, really like to hire you 
and most of the architect uh, most of the drone companies nowadays especially all the companies in india that i know as well right now i have also started using this kind of flight controller so there are different kinds of drones like they look all different but inside they have normally one of these two systems so uh, for the dji architecture how does it work is like the dji has the flight controller code hidden inside so you cannot technically do the test without uh, their device but as i have a device i'll show you how how the system works so normally you can just turn it on and if we can do like a simulator on your in your own home so i'll just give me 2 minutes uh yeah so uh, as you can see right now so like i was speaking so there are two parts in the application so there is like the drone and the second part is the phone so uh as you can see over here to to create a, an image of the drone in your pc and if you want to go ahead with the programming what you have to do is like you have to install a simulator and i'll provide you the links later on so normally the idea is to have a simulator like this on your side and start simulating and once you start simulating 
The home point has been updated. Please check it on the map. Yeah. So this kind of a simulator can be used now. And and if you want to test your system, you can easily do it using this kind of simulator. So the idea is to replicate the drones on your side. And then if you connect with your phone. So now I have connected with my phone to this thing, uh, to this. And you can see like you can see all the updates that are there on your phone. So this is the ground station. And what you see on the screen is the drone. So once you have that uh, with the help of both of them, uh, you can do the testing on your side. So normally this kind of simulators are easily available on the internet and depending upon what kind of a PC you are using. So for example, Linux or Windows, uh, you can easily download one of them and uh, just start on your side. So in this one, this was the DJI drone. So if you can see on the top, it has the DJI simulator UI. So this is something that is built by DJI for their own drones, but you can use this technology on your side easily by downloading the simulator and then installing the applications on your phone. So if you can see in the, on this one, there was the drone that I displayed to you before. So this was like a DJI drone. In this scenario, it will always be a DJI drone. And you have a DJI flight controller inside of it. And for the communication, you can see in the middle, it is written like DJI SDK. So what it means by the DJI SDK is it's like a software developing library that you can easily go to DJI.com and download it today. And it has all the different kinds of functions. So if you want to go ahead and, and start developing, you could just uh, integrate it in your Android app or iOS app and just start developing. And uh, yes, someone has a question. No. Might be uh, by mistakely happen. You can continue. Uh, okay, no problem. Uh, if you have any questions, you can raise your hands or at the end of the session, we'll do like a big question answer round. So any kinds of question that you have, like how do we want to get in or if you have any specific questions, you can just ask me without any issues. Uh, so yeah, and on the right hand side, you could see the application. Uh, so you can run it on Windows, iOS or Android. So as I have an Android phone, I was running it on that and I had the DJI Go application installed. But I have also personally developed lots of different applications for this kind of drones. So normally you just, like you start a normal project during your classes, like a Java project. So similarly, you could start like an Android project and integrate the SDK. And whenever we want to send any specific methods to the drone, you could directly send using that. And the second one is the open source architecture. Uh, before I start this, one of the points that, that I man, man, wanted to mention, like why I am focusing more on this architecture is that uh, one, like I mentioned before, uh, most of the companies have now started using this. Uh, most of the big companies have started using this kind of a firmware. So if you want to get into it right now, like in next year or in the next two or three years, this would be the best bet to put on because you would have lots of companies coming out right now that are wanting this kind of developers. And also like with the DJI, the second thing is that with DJI to test it on your side and to learn things, you need to buy the DJI drone. So like, for example, now I displayed you the simulator. This kind of simulators are also available in open source technologies. So you could, the open source technologies are completely free. So there are no investments that are needed from your side. In, in case of the DJI drone, you have to spend around 20,000 rupees, which is a lot. But if, if you want to start a business, it could be a great idea to invest that. Uh, but uh, regarding the open source technology, you have it for free. And you could today download the applications for your phone or your laptop. And you could also today download the simulators to just go and start developing. So as you can see on the drone side, uh, so with uh, Ardu Pilot, if you see the bottom on the left uh, drone side, it's custom drone hardware. So before in DJI, the, the drones are only built by DJI. But here there is no those specific uh, rule over here. All kinds of different companies uh, work on different drones. And all of 
all of these kinds of drone can be used with Argo Pilot. And the second part is the processor. And this kind of processor over here is the middleware. And these are built by Argo Pilot or PX4. And similarly, they have their own PX4 and Argo Pilot firmware uh, that are used by different companies depending upon their needs. Both of them have their specialities, like PX4 is more stable, while the Argo Pilot has more extra functionalities. So depending upon that, the companies decide. But overall, like if you want to do development in the future for mobile or uh, Windows, uh, the idea would be that you won't have to worry what kind of a firmware there is. The only thing that you need to worry about is the how you communicate. And you can see in the middle, it's written Mavlink. So what is Mavlink? Is Mavlink is a kind of a protocol. So like, you know, like HTTPS, TT that you have for internet. So similarly, Mavlink is a protocol that you use for communicating with the drones. And here, uh, there are different kinds of applications that are already built. And you can use these applications or you can add different code to this application and design your own using that. So normally, you, you whenever you want to add new things or you want to learn new things, uh, you, you can just Google Mavlink and then whatever you want to add. So you want to do missions using Mavlink. So you can just search that and you will get a lot of info on this specific subject. And on the right hand side, you have the ground control station. And what I mean again by the ground control station is, is your own devices. So it could be your phones, your laptops, or even uh, your PCs you can use for that. And over here, uh, as Ardu Pilot is open source and it is used by lots of different companies, it is available in all of the platforms as well. That is an added advantage. So you have it available on Linux, Macs, I uh, Mac, iOS, Android, and Windows. And on top, you can see like I have written some names. What are they? Are They are just a different applications. So these are big open source applications that are already built and they do a great function. So if you want to get into this technology, one of the ideas that you can do is like uh, to check out one of these applications and depending upon what language you know the best, you could take a look at the code. Some of these uh, softwares are definitely a bit complex since they are like completely built drone applications. But there are also some smaller applications that you can have a look at and understand how they work. And if you want to start designing something new, you can just start making changes in them as well. So if if you want to add some new UI things, you could just uh, use the backend that is already created and add those small UI parts. So for setting up locally, uh, as I displayed before with DJI, there are two parts. So there is uh, a simulator and the simulator over here is called as the SITL. So what is SITL is software in the loop and software in the loop. What it does is that it allows you to uh, replicate a plane, a helicopter or a rover. What do I mean by a rover is uh, that are normal uh, vehicles that you see the robotic vehicles. So normally robots for moving to different place, they also use this, this uh, specific algori uh, algorithm or message protocol. So not only do, does this work on drones, this protocol, this also works on uh, different kinds of robots that are out currently out there. And uh, for the software, uh, you can also like download any one of them according to your preference. I would suggest like for test, you can download Q Ground Control because uh, Q Ground Control works on all and all types of PCs and phones. So if if you want to try it out with your friends. Uh, then all of you can try the, this single software instead of each of you having different funds and having different doubts. So how to start? So normally these are the two tutorials. I, I shared the uh, presentation after with you, but normally this has the complete uh, video tutorials as well as written tutorials uh, that are done by the people who have actually created it. So, and also the people who have created it are still very much involved in this. And if there are new people coming in like you tomorrow, they are very much interested to share all of their knowledge. Uh, so you, it, it is something uh, very special in the drone community that even if someone new comes in, the biggest personalities in the drone community will be out to help you. You can see like the, there are people who started the whole drone technology and you have small UI questions. They are actually sitting there and answering those questions. So that is a big plus. And if you want to learn something from them, or if you have some specific questions or ideas, you could directly pitch it to them as well. 
So, uh, so over here, as you can see, like this is a link that has Ardu Pilot, and there is a setup page. So depending upon, uh, I I did not include tutorials for that in the presentation as I think that would take a really long time. And one more thing that would happen is also that there are different uh, students with who have different preferences in the user, in the software that they use. So in this case scenario, you could just take a look at the link and just download it directly on your side using the the details that are provided. There are also video tutorials for both Windows and Linux. So I think uh, it, it won't be very difficult to do. And similarly, once you set it up, there is also a way to turn it on. And you can check that on the second link that I have provided. And this is an example of the simulator, uh, which is uh, which is provided by uh, Ardu Pilot. So as you can see, when you turn it on, uh, there is a on the left side you have like a command window. But normally, I would say you don't have to worry about it. The only thing that you have to do when you are developing softwares is just to look at it. So normally, when you start your own application. Uh, the backend code is already done to connect you automatically to this kind of a system. So you need to only start it up so that you can see different things happening on your PC. That's all. And normally you can see what the drone is doing on the right side on the map. And you can see the small details like altitude, the battery. These are all fake details, so not that useful. But uh, you can see different kinds of details on the top. And for the next part, next part is the ground station application. And as this is like, have to be installed not like a normal application on Windows or uh, Linux or iOS, this is very easy to install. So you can already find the APK on Play Store or uh, you can find the iOS app on, on the iOS app store as well. So this is very easy to install. You could just search QGround control and you could download it on your PC. And it's good to go. There is no difficulties, I would say, with this. Uh, you install it like a normal software and it just starts running. And one of the main things with this application is it connects automatically with the simulator. So once you turn on the simulator and turn on this application, all the connections are automatically made and there are different commands and you could send them, send those commands. So you can see this is like the picture of Q ground control. And on top, uh, you can see some small details like the battery is 100% or satellites, are, 10 satellites are connected, things like that. And you have on the left top, you have small buttons like take off, uh, land or do some missions. So this kind of things can be easily done with the simulator. Once you, once you turn on the simulator and start it, uh, you would just have this application that you could directly, that directly connects and you could send this commands to test it out. And this complete software is open source. So tomorrow, if you want to start your own business and modify something in this, you could just do that as well and uh, share it with your clients. And then you would be able to provide different kinds of function. And this has all the basic types of mission. So tomorrow, if you want to survey farmland for anybody, you could easily do that using this kind of software. So uh, before... Uh, finishing the presentation, I'll also like to mention some other open source software. So sometimes the, what can happen, especially with simulators, is that uh, they are a bit difficult to set up. Uh, and also some for some uh, for some people, for example, uh, they prefer to do it on Windows or uh, Linux. So depending upon that, they could choose what they think could be the good software for them. So over here, you have like a more 3D. If you saw the picture before, so this was more like a 2D simulator and it does not look that great. Technically speaking, we, when we change the software, it doesn't matter for the simulator. But if someone prefers 3D simulators, they can use the JMAP sim. So it is, all of them are freely available on the internet and you can directly download them if you want. And the next softwares are more on the, on the ground station side. So this is an application that is called Vision Planner. And the, the, one of the advantages of using this software is that it has its own simulator. So you don't have to download all the other things. You could just download a mission planner. Uh, there is, sorry for the bad image, but if you see like the red line, it is written simulator. And with that, you could easily uh, start the simulation on your own PC and connect it with automatically. And this is built on Windows and it is directly available via download reader, downloadable. 
So you could just go on right now and download it as well. And it will start simulating and you can actually fly drones and see how they fly. Uh, so this is built in C-sharp. So like I mentioned, like I have men mentioning different open source software for the reason that if if student wants to learn, uh, they can depending upon the type of programming language that they know. So if you know, if you have Windows and if you, are, if you know how to use C-sharp, I would suggest this would be the best software to go to. Uh, this is directly built in the Visual Studio. So you don't have to do lots of work on your side. And I have provided the link at the end. So it's available completely on GitHub. And you can easily download this project and build on your side as well. One more open source software, which is there for the for your phone, is called as Tower. Again, this is available on GitHub. And this one is built in Java. So people that prefer Java uh, or Android can easily, easily run, easily do modifications in this application. And again, like I mentioned, like, the advantage of using Windows or Android application is that the setup is by default done. So if you download Android Studio, the setup will be completely done. So you will have as less work as possible to do. And you could actually get into the main part very easily. So that is all. Thank you. So uh, does anyone have any questions or want to review any slide that, that you want more information on? Yes, anybody having question? Hello? OK. Before the vote of thanks, uh, I'm sharing the uh, feedback and attendance sheet with those participants. And uh, immediately, Ekta ma'am will uh, give the vote of thanks. Over to ma'am. Uh, ma'am, you are un uh, please unmute yourself. Okay, okay. I'm audible, uh, Yes, sir? you are audible right now. Okay, sir. On behalf of uh, Department of Information Technology, uh, I really uh, extend a really hearty vote of thanks to you, uh, Mr. Jatin Korekar, sir, who have given us his precious time from his uh, busiest uh, schedule. And also he has shared us uh, how uh, the drone will be helpful in farming at the earthquakes, when the earthquakes comes and in such situation, how the uh, drone will be helpful to provide all the facilities or maybe medical facilities and all and he have explained in detail all the architecture of uh, drone uh, so uh, sir i think so your all your webinar will definitely going to add the values to the uh, students as well as all the faculty members so thank you so much sir for giving your precious time to us and could fully conduct this esteemed webinar. Further, I also would like to thank to the coordinator and the senior professor, Dr. S.M. Zadav, sir, for his valuable guidance and efforts. Last but not the least, I would like to thank coordinator, Professor S.B. More, sir, for making all the arrangement to conduct this webinar successful. And I'm also thankful to all the faculty members, dear students, for participating in this webinar. Okay, thank you. Stay safe and healthy. And a very happy new year to all. And uh, now I request uh, Maurice, sir, if uh, anybody is having difficulty. Yeah. Uh, uh, thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, so, yes. First of all, uh, uh, thank you, sir, Jatin, sir, uh, for uh, giving a wonderful session uh, to participant and uh, also uh, for us. Because this topic is uh, new for us and uh, how a drone is uh, working and where we uh, need to program. There are so many questions are having in mind also. My, uh, okay. So first of all, uh, I'm requesting to, uh, yes. Uh, Sutha, sir, you want to tell something? Uh, Jadav, sir. 
Hello. It, it, it's it's fine. Thank you very much, uh, Jatin sir, and all faculty members, Professor Jado and students. Uh, thank you very much, and uh, definitely it will be helpful for our students. And uh, we'll try to extend this uh, uh, link, okay, so that uh, students can uh, use it in our projects or maybe uh, whatever they want to do. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Uh, definitely. So this webinar will be definitely uh, helpful to our uh, uh, student in their future projects. From this, uh, uh, from behalf of uh, department and uh, senior professor um, Jadhav sir, uh, Sudha sir, Bhakta ma'am, Ekta ma'am, and also the Jatin sir, uh, we are here uh, ending our program. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you for providing me this opportunity. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much.